A big thank you to Capture One for sponsoring today's video. You can use the link in the description to get 20% off your first purchase. This is the Leica Q3, the third iteration of the Leica Q series. And let's just say there are some big changes. Over the course of the last two weeks, I've had the really cool opportunity to shoot with Leica's newest digital camera, the Leica Q3. And in today's video, I want to share my first impressions about the camera and talk about what's new coming from the Leica Q2. Those of you who watched my Leica Q2 video from last year would know that I had a few critiques about the camera, some of which have been fixed with the Q3, but this camera is roughly the same camera as the Q2 with the same purpose to be a full frame fixed lens workhorse of a camera with an incredible Simulux 28 millimeter f1.7 lens. All of that still remains true. So I'm here in Venice, Italy as I test out the Leica Q3. I hope you all enjoy some of the photos I have to share. I'll have all of the settings and camera information next to each photo in this video. So I guess we might as well talk about it right away, the tilt screen. It's the first of its kind on any Leica camera. And to me, it's a pleasant surprise because I personally enjoy using tilt screens on cameras. They let me accurately compose photos from tough angles. And you know, if you have a bad back, helps, helps with that too. Now I never thought Leica would introduce a tilt screen to their cameras. I just felt like, you know, Leica's sort of the black sheep of all camera brands, right? And they don't just follow other manufacturers for the sake of following everyone else. But to see Leica finally introduce a tilt screen to the Q3 shows that they are listening to their users because I think a lot of people were asking for this. I'm sure this might be the one thing that divides most people about this camera, but the tilt screen, in my opinion, is one of the most functional and helpful designs introduced to modern digital cameras. Also, if you don't like the tilt screen, the best part is you don't have to use it. This isn't a flimsy screen either. It's super sturdy. It feels like how I would imagine a Leica tilt screen to feel. However, I would have liked to see the screen uh, just be flush against the rest of the camera body instead of it protruding out of the body like this. I think that would have been a lot sleeker on an aesthetic level. Also taking the screen out isn't always the easiest thing to do because there isn't much of a grip here. Uh, you only have this very thin indent that goes along the bottom and top of the screen. I think a look at this tilt screen is probably the biggest selling point of the Leica Q3. I know that sounds weird to say in uh, 2023, but it just makes the camera that much more functional and versatile to more people. And, you know, I think that might be worth the upgrade for some people. As if a Leica camera couldn't get better in image quality, apparently they do. The Leica Q3 has now upgraded the Q2's 47.3 megapixel sensor to a new 60 megapixel sensor. Pair that with the already incredibly sharp 28 millimeter Simulex lens and you've got a lot of image quality in your hands.
All right, so I'm going to load up a few of the photos I've taken with the Q3 in Capture One Pro. Capture One is sponsoring today's video. They'll be releasing a new version of their software that supports the files of the Leica Q3. I've been using Capture One Pro for quite some time already, and you know, regardless of what camera you use, Capture One Pro has some of the most advanced editing and raw processing capabilities of any editing software that I've personally used. And with the ability to customize your workspace to how you like to edit, that goes a long way in having a more efficient workflow as a photographer. All right, so I've got the Leica Q3 plugged into my MacBook, and we're just gonna import directly from the camera via USB-C uh, to my Capture One catalog. You'll notice I'm able to do this now with the Q3 because there is now a USB-C port, which is really nice to see. Transferring photos into Capture One is extremely fast. And after I've selected all of my photos and started the import process, I can just get right into editing these photos. There's no need for me to wait for the import process to finish. Now this photo here is a really good example of just how insane the image quality is on the Leica Q3. You wouldn't necessarily notice this while you're out shooting, but you know, loading it up here and zooming in, you can see just how much detail is captured in this scene. And the craziest part is this photo is already cropped. Now what I love about Capture One Pro is I have so much control over the image that I'm editing. And you know the Q3 has 14 stops of dynamic range. I really have no trouble here retaining all of the details in the shadow and highlights of this image. Typically low light images are a bit harder to edit. Capture One Pro is having no issues with this particular image here. I still have a ton of control over these great colors in this image. And using the adjustment layers feature, I can make these localized edits and keep them separate and organized from each other. So if you're interested in checking out Capture One Pro for yourself, you can visit the link in the description that'll get you a 30 day free trial, but also 20% off your first purchase of Capture One Pro. I wanna thank my friends at Capture One for sponsoring today's video. This video wouldn't be possible without them. So a big thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. This new sensor also allows you to shoot in three resolutions, all of which use the full size of the sensor. So you can shoot at 18 megapixels, 36, or the full 60 megapixels. I like that they have this option because you might not necessarily want to use all 60 megapixels. I mean, to be fair, that's, that's gonna eat up a lot of your storage quickly. And sometimes you just don't need that high quality of an image. Having the option to step down to a still very capable 36 megapixels is nice to have. The EVF on the Leica Q3 got a much needed upgrade. It's gone from the 3.68 dot viewfinder to a 5.76 dot viewfinder. If anything, I felt like this was the one thing they needed to upgrade going from the Q2. I found the EVF on the Q2 to be a bit outdated. And you know, the jump to this 5.76 dot EVF, it's a huge difference. It's very noticeable. You know, when you're looking through a digital EVF all day, you're going to want that to be as bright and as clear as it can be. The Q3 has the same frame lines feature using the digital zoom, so you can have a 35 millimeter, 50, 75, and now a new 90 millimeter frame line. You're still forced to use the frame lines. There's no way to just show you, you know, a 35 millimeter view instead of the frame line. Composing shots with the longer focal lengths is a lot easier now thanks to that improved EVF. 
So you might have noticed that the back of the camera is a bit different on the Leica Q3. The play button and the menu button have moved to the right side of the camera next to the D-pad. And the function button has been replaced with a second smaller function button at the top. I think I preferred where the buttons were on the Q2 because it was sort of out of the way of where my hand grips the camera. But I guess with the tilt screen edition, they couldn't have those buttons where they used to be. So uh, I guess that's one win for the anti-tilt screeners. The Leica Q3 has that same beautiful 28mm Simulux lens, and it's worth bringing up the topic of the 28mm focal length again in this video like I did in the Q2 video. This is a fixed lens camera, and yes, you do have frame lines to help you compose for other focal lengths, but at its heart, this is a 28mm lens. If you love shooting with a 28mm lens, then you're going to love shooting with this Simulux 28mm. But for my style of photography, I just don't shoot with 28mm that often. I shoot with, you know, longer focal lengths, like a 50. And, you know, that's an important factor to consider for yourself when deciding if you're going to want to, you know, pick up a Leica Q3. As you saw before, the left side of the camera now has a USB-C port and a mini HDMI port. So if you're in a pinch for battery life and you need to charge your camera, you can do it with a portable battery. But you might never actually need to now because the batteries have been improved a bit. The Q3 supports a new version of the battery which now holds up to 2200 milliamps of power versus the 1800 milliamps of power of the previous version. Now while I've been out here in Venice shooting, I've had two batteries with me and I found two fully charged batteries to be enough for you know, all day shooting. Um, and it's worth noting, I also have the EVF and LCD screen at max brightness. The Leica Q3 might have the most changes between iterations that I can remember in recent memory. So I can't quite cover every new change in this video in detail, so I'm going to quickly go through a few more notable changes. There is a new hybrid intelligent autofocusing system in the Leica Q3. It now uses phase detect autofocus and contrast detection. I found it to be very snappy. The ability to essentially have single point autofocus and tracking autofocus at the same time was pretty cool to have. The shutter button on the Q3 is different as you can see, and it allows you to attach a soft shutter button. Previously on the Leica Q2, you would have these black bars that go across the screen to display the settings info. And technically, that black bar was covering part of the actual photo you were taking. Now on the Q3, those black bars are now transparent, so now you can partially see a bit of what's covered. The Leica Q3 is pretty much everything you love about the Q2, but new and refreshed, with more versatility and functionality. For a lot of people who shoot with a Leica Q camera, this kind of camera never leaves you. You bring it with you everywhere you go. And I think most of the changes that have been added to the Q3 all seem to improve the overall user experience with the camera, which ultimately makes it a better daily camera for more people. Now, as much as I don't shoot with a 28 millimeter lens that often, I still had a lot of fun running around this city uh, and taking photos with this camera. But I do plan on sharing one more video that I made with the Leica Q3, 
Um, it's a little POV video from here in Venice. So look out for that video when it releases. A huge thank you to Leica and Capture One for making this video possible. And don't forget to check out the link in the description to get 20% off your first purchase of Capture One Pro. Thank you to everyone for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions for me about the Leica Q3, my experience with it, please leave a comment and I'll try my best to get to as many of you as I can. With that said, I'll see you all in the next video. See ya.